This week I went outside to do some bird watching because it's the time of year when birds are migrating through my area. I get to see birds that I don't normally see other times of the year. While I was outside looking for birds, I saw one perch in the distance and it looked like it had yellow underneath and gray on top so it had a contrasting color and I could tell it was a medium sized bird but other than that I couldn't see any details on it to understand what kind of bird it could be. I didn't have enough information to even look it up in a book or on the internet because I just couldn't see it well enough. Later I went and got a pair of binoculars and went back outside to watch the birds and one little bird flew into a tree that was not too far in front of me but it was kind of hidden behind the leaves and it was hopping around and it was hard to see until I used the binoculars. When I looked at that bird through the binoculars suddenly I could see all of its tiny movements and I could see all of the details on its body. I could tell that it had yellow feathers with black and white bars on its wings and more black and white stripes along its back. I got enough information about how this bird looked that I could look it up later and narrow it down to one type of bird. It was also really fun to watch the bird hopping around in the tree and it made me feel like I was part of its world and I could try to understand it a little better because I could get such an up-close view of it. I also used the binoculars to watch some butterflies later. The butterflies I was watching are called long-tailed skippers and they do not stay still very long as their name skipper implies and they were just skipping from one frostweed plant to another but because I could put the binoculars on them I wasn't getting close enough to scare them away. So they did stay on the plants longer than they would have if I had been closer to them but I still got a great detailed view of their feathers and of their feeding habits. Binoculars are a great tool for your kids to use because they can get an up-close view of nature that they wouldn't normally get to see. They won't scare animals away because they won't be walking right up to them. They can keep their distance and even if they make some sounds or talk to you or to other kids, they're not going to scare these animals away. This is also a great activity for your kids to learn to enjoy now because they can use binoculars their entire lives and use that as a way to enjoy nature. How do binoculars work? They have curved lenses in them that bend light and this makes them bring distant objects into focus. There are different kinds of binoculars. They can focus on objects that are farther away or closer depending on how they're made. And so the best way to figure out what kind of binoculars to use is just go somewhere that sells them and try them out in the store and figure out which ones are going to be easiest for your child to use. This week I had the opportunity to try Vortex Diamondback Classic binoculars and I really enjoyed that I could focus easily and my eyes didn't feel strained when I used them and they didn't bounce around a lot. Sometimes the binoculars that focus really well can be hard to hold steady enough to really see what you're looking at, so you need a stand to put them on. So just find the binoculars that are the easiest to use, but that still give you a great view of the animals that you want to see. I want to give you three steps for how to use binoculars with your kids. The first step is to choose a good location where you can watch animals from. You'll need to find a location where you can see trees or bushes or water or flowers because these are the types of natural objects that are going to attract animals to come to them. If you are in the city and don't have trees and bushes and water nearby, then you can look for places where animals might perch because a lot of birds will perch on top of city buildings or on the window ledges. The second step is to stay quiet and still. This of course depends on how close you are to the animals that you'll be watching. If you're far enough away, then noise probably won't bother them. But if you're going to watch animals that are only 20 to 30 feet away or even closer, then you will definitely need to stay quiet 
and stay still so that they don't get scared away. The third step is to observe. Take your time. Animals will come and go, and sometimes they might spend a while in one spot, and other times they might just land for a moment and then fly away again. The more time you take to observe the habits of these animals, the more you will learn about them. Do you want to make science fun? Get your kids outside and spend a lot less time planning lessons? Go to eiforkcom slash free. That's ei, the number four, k.com forward slash free.